record. So good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. We literally only ever do these webinars on a Friday. And so I just have so many like endorphins attached to hosting these webinars because it tells my brain that it's Friday. Uh, I am so excited to be joined by Sarah. So Sarah is a client of ours and she is a premium branding spe specialist. Uh, so we're not just talking about branding today. We're talking about premium, high level boutique style branding. Um, Sarah has put together a presentation and a webinar for us today that's talking all about how to incorporate incorporate premium branding into your branding uh, and how you can incorporate and communicate that to your clients in line with things like your mission and your core values all at the same time. She's put together some really great examples for us. If you're anything like me uh, and an accountant uh, stereotype, then actually creativity is something that I really struggle with. And so she's put together some lovely examples for us to walk and talk us through it. Um, and so she's going to be talking all about how you can use branding to get the right clients coming to you, the questions that you need to ask yourself and answer in order to build a really, really successful premium brand and how you can go about starting to do that. Uh, so everybody who joins the event today, whether that's live or on demand, gets access to her very, very detailed guide, which is seven secrets to luxury brand success. And also anybody who joins the webinar live or on demand will get a free coffee chat with Sarah if you want one, uh, if you are interested in chatting to her more about who she is and what she does. So without further ado, a um, little bit of housekeeping. Everybody is on mute. That's fantastic. Uh, we'd love to see you if you're brave enough to take yourself off um, put yourself on camera. Um, please do ask questions as we go. I'm going to be moderating the chat. I'll be hopping in and uh, asking Sarah your questions. So do feel free to um, put your put your questions straight in the chat and I will hop in as we go. But I'm going to hand over to the lovely Sarah Shuttle. Thanks, Rachel. Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah and I'm a luxury brand specialist. I am delighted to be here with you today. You've got what a way to kick up and kick off a month. September, here we are. So yes, I'm going to be talking to you today if I get my presentation up. Uh, let me see. Share my screen. Can everyone see that? Yes. I'm okay. just going to minimize the squares. Right. So premium branding for your business, the vital step to attracting dream clients. So let's just, we'll go into this. I will give you a little bit of background about me, my experience, and why I decided to specialize in premium branding. So, but first of all, what are we going to cover today? First of all, here we go. We've got the difference between mainstream and premium brands, the core brand foundations that you're going to need to establish, and that's whether you're mainstream or premium, but a really, really key when you're establishing yourself as a premium brand and the power of visuals in communicating your brand to your audience. Because visuals are as, as important as words are, people won't read your words unless they are captivated by what they see. So a little bit about me. I'm Sarah Shuttle, as I've said. Um, I'm a luxury brand specialist. I style, I design, and I use strategy to elevate brands uh, so they can book more clients, more dream clients in particular, uh, earn more money, make more impact and have more freedom in their business and their lives. Because as we know, when you are working with the clients, you really, you know, you want to work with the clients that make business feel so easy. That's when you get to do your best work. It's when you feel freer and it doesn't feel like work. Whereas when we get clients that aren't perhaps as aligned it's always more of a drudge and it always feels like work and of course if we wanted it to feel like work we'd be in a job so uh, I've been designing for over a decade so this would be yeah probably about 11 years now and I started my own business um, in 2016 so we're at seven years now uh, in which time I've worked with probably over hundreds of brands to take them to the premium level. And I, as I've listed here, I work with um, premium service providers and businesses uh, in industries or a huge range of industries. Um, so either business services, let's say coaching, business management, events, beauty, wellness, fashion, interiors, property, retail, and any others you'd like to throw in. Basically, if there is a premium offering 
that you you know provide i brand your business and that's something that as I say, i've been doing for seven years now under my own um brand name and a little last bit about me um i've been featured in 40 brilliant brand designers by the brand stylist I've been in Authority Magazine, uh, Show It, which is a web platform, their uh, design anthology. And my work and my clients have been seen in Forbes, uh, Vogue, Tatler, and many others. So since we've worked together, a lot of my clients have gone on to be featured in really high profile publications. And that connection really adds to their premium brand credibility. But enough about me, <laughs> let's go into what we're actually talking about today. So we'll start off um, not talking as such about uh, a premium brand, but just business versus brand. Now, I do not mean to insult anyone's intelligence if you think, well, I already know this. It's just important that we cover everything. So let's start with a business being the commerce. So this is the way you buy, the trade, the commercial operation, um, and why it can be different to the brand, which is, and I've put this in, um, I used a quote because it sums it up probably better than I could. Uh, the sum of all expressions by which an entity intends to be recognized. So it's the perception of the business is the way of making money. The brand is how it's perceived, the feelings it evokes. What do you think of when you think of, say, um, Chanel? It's not uh, how they're making money. It's about all the things that come to your mind when you think of that brand. And then the brand ing, and again, used another quote because it's it really sums it up. Branding is the perpetual process of identifying, creating, and managing the cumulative assets and actions that shape the perception of a brand in stakeholders' minds. So basically, we are trying to influence and create a perception of your brand. And we do this by creating imagery, uh, graphics, anything, it can be obviously so much more than that going into the voice and the messaging, which we'll, we'll touch on as well. But this is the process of communication and creating that perception in the minds of, well, let's not say stakeholders here, your ideal clients. So that's how we differentiate from the business, just the practicalities, the way of making money. The brand is what you think of, what you feel, and the perception of what you're trying to create. And this I, I put together, so people buy through a business, it's the practical way they do it. But you, what you're buying into when you make that purchase is the brand. If you've got a pretty nondescript brand, it's much harder to make that sale because how can you buy into something that doesn't evoke emotion, that doesn't evoke anything? It's just a business, you know, maybe if it is a low end product, it's easier to make those sales in that way if there's no established brand, although it's still difficult. But when we're talking a premium offering, people won't just buy into nondescript. They need something to connect with. So let's look at mainstream brands versus premium. So what makes premium brands different? And I could probably ask this question, um, see what comes up in the chat, but I will... Um, if you think of some of the real luxury brands, what comes to mind? If you just think about that, and I will go through these, I've listed five things, and obviously the list could be endless, but five real key things that make premium brands different. The first, exclusivity. It, think of it like the part of the cool gang. You want to belong to that group and they don't allow everyone in, something sets it apart. And that drives up the desire to belong. It's a very psychological thing that when it's exclusive and not everyone can be part of it, you want to be part of it more. So exclusivity is a huge part of being a premium brand. So whether, you know, higher price points, it means that some people can't make that leap and it creates a desire because there is less of it. Heritage. Now, this isn't to say you've got to have a brand that goes back 100 years, because chances are <laughs> you, you don't. But heritage, you know, it's got meaning. It's got a story. This is what real successful luxury brands have. They have that heritage about them. 
So don't worry if you're a new brand. It doesn't mean, you know, well, I haven't been going for so long, I can't succeed. It just means these the things we're going to talk about, you really need to have that kind of brand story going on. Attention to detail. Now, this one is really key for what I do. For me, everything is important. The tiniest detail, whether it's on a and something you're making in Canva with, you know, it, it every detail matters because if you think, and I'm going to use the analogy, um, say, look at, uh, I know you're not in fashion, but if we did look at, say, a fashion brand with luxury bags, the detail on that will be absolutely, you know, top tier. These things are so important in the minds of prospective clients who are looking for a premium offering. And if you're doing a service, a business service, say accounting or whatever it is, Obviously, you haven't got a product, but that doesn't mean that attention to detail isn't important. It's the little touches that together, sometimes you might not even notice them. But if they're not done, if there's no attention to detail, overall, it creates this feeling of just this isn't good enough. Like there's corners being cut and there's absolutely no room for that when it comes to premium brands. Superior offerings. So when you have something that you are selling at a premium price point, it has to be better in some way, shape or form. And that will depend upon what it is you're selling. But there's something that sets it apart. And that is what then you will go to communicate. And an enhanced client experience. So little details when it comes to uh, onboarding or extra touches, extra the extra mile that you will go to, you know, is something that makes their experience with you feel more, is it more just special and make your clients feel special. And that matters. It's not about sort of cutting corners so that we can have the cheapest, you know, quickest, you know, and it's not about the bottom line here. This is about making sure your clients feel special and therefore willing to pay those premium price points. So those five things, and I do have, um, which I'll link at the end, a, a blog post about this, which goes into more detail about these different elements of um, premium brands. Now, credibility, let's talk about this, because credibility is key in any any brand. Uh, however, we, and we know, let's talk about it in general. First of all, yeah, prospective clients need to know, like, and trust you. If they're gonna buy, they need to have that trust and any red flags, any doubts that raise suspicion is not conducive to making sales. And I, I back this up with this stat that is that 75 percent of consumers have admitted to making judgments on a company's credibility based on their website design. So this is a brand element, part of their brand identity, their visuals, and they are judging the business's ability to do its job. So to carry out a service based on what the website looks like. Now, you might say, well, that's not fair. You know, I'm, it's not a representative of what I do. But people make these judgments. That's three quarters of people landing on a website will say this company can't do what it's saying it can do because the website isn't good enough. So that is a really, really big um, impact on potentially converting your dream clients. But to book higher end clients. Their trust has to be even more than in everyday brands because the risk is higher. Their investment is higher. If you're going to pay £10,000 for something you've just seen on Facebook, the chances of it going wrong, you can't afford to take those risks. You know, if it was a £10, um, £10 necklace, £10,000, you know, the, the, the risk is greater. So you really need to build that trust. Credibility matters in all brands, but particularly with uh, high-end brands, premium brands. So there's no room at all for suspicion or doubt in your dream clients' minds about your credibility. They have to know this person is legit, credible, professional, and I can trust them with my investment. So where do you start in going about all of this, in building that brand to a company, a business? First of all, you need to understand the variables involved. And I like looking at it at, at it like this as a 
kind of like a, an equation. This is where my strategic geek side comes out. So we've got your A, which is your brand. We've got your B, which is the goal of booking those dream clients. So how do we bridge that gap? And this comes into, see, communication. And I'm not just talking about the words you use, and we'll break these down in a minute. So it's looking quite simply, if you break it down as an equation, which I'm sure might appeal to some accountants here, <laughs> um, it's quite practical. We are just solving and looking at these missing pieces. So part of your brand, and this took me a while to work out probably, like properly how to uh, convey this in a diagram, but we're gonna look first. So your brand will be the mission, the vision, the values, and your unique selling point. Uh, we also, so then we've got dream client identification. All of these parts are core to your brand foundations. So well, I'll go through these in more detail in a minute and see the communication. So visuals, so any visual aspect of your brand, voice, how you are talking, how you are writing, there'll be a brand voice, the messaging that you use and the marketing. Now, obviously those side things, the marketing comes after, and I always ins insist on the importance of this because if you jump straight into marketing, thinking, well, that's how I'm gonna you know, get business, that's how I'm actually gonna make money. Without doing the first bit, you're essentially driving traffic off a cliff because there's nowhere for it to go. You are pointing cars in that direction, but there's nothing for them to arrive at. You need the brand first before you can do the marketing. So let's look at the brand, so mission. Uh, this is what your brand is currently doing to fulfill its purpose. And the mission statement uh, will clearly state what you do, who you do it for, how it does it, how you do it, and why. And this, um, it, it can be just as simple as, you know, you, as simple as you want. You have to have those key elements so that you know very succinctly and very clearly what you're doing. Sounds over simple, but this is what you're doing now, as opposed to, your vision. These are often um, confused, your mission statement, a vision statement. So the mission, as I said, of your brand is what you're doing right now, how you're doing it, why you're doing it, who you're doing it for. The vision is looking forward, as in what is your brand intending to do? What impact is it hoping to make in the world? So yeah, it sets out what you see in the future for your brand and its impact. And the easiest way to remember the difference between these two is that your mission is today and your vision is tomorrow. So we keep it what you're doing now and what you hope to achieve in the future. Now let's look at values. So these are the guiding principles and beliefs that your company stands for. Uh, Rachel and I were talking briefly before this about values and pets <laughs> came up as one of them. Um, but things that really matter to your brand. Also, for so for example, in my business, quality, attention to detail, individuality, creativity, because that's what I'm doing. I am creating something and it's very important to me that everything is individual, bespoke. The attention to detail has to be the highest because I'm a premium service provider, therefore it's really important. And that therefore, I develop processes to reflect that. So, you know, my onboarding, my proposals, I've, I go the extra mile in those to reflect the individuality, the creativity, the attention to detail, the quality. And there are obviously so many different values, but it's really important to identify the core ones for you so that you can run your business by them. And also you find clients who have the same values at their heart. Now, USP, so your unique selling point, what makes you different? If someone was to ask you that, why should your ideal clients choose you over the competition? And often I've, seen, I've seen people say, well, I don't know, you know, I'm good at this, I'm good at that. But it's a, that can often be an imposter syndrome. No one wants to say, 
well, this is why you should choose me over the competition. But there will be something that sets you apart. How do you stand out and why should people choose you over everyone else? And knowing this difference, knowing what makes you different will really help when you are trying to communicate that visually because you will need something that is just different from the rest. So now let's look at the ideal clients. So one thing here, it's not just demographics, but that, that obviously is a part of it. So age, location, gender, income, all the things about that, you know, socioeconomic background, they matter, but they are not the only thing. Other things that are really important are their priorities. So in life and their buying priorities. Some people like to see um, a lot of case studies. Some people like to see um, just a varied portfolio. And there are obviously some people who I'm sure won't be your dream clients, but who bargain hunt, you know, who their priority is low price. So understanding your dream clients and what they're looking for will really help when it comes to the marketing as well to see what are they looking for? What, what is going to drive them to purchase from me? And then also look at what influences them. What do they like and dislike? What are the brands in different industries? So what fashion brands do they like? Or where do they like to shop? Where, the, where do they like to go out? This will then influence your branding because it will be something that appeals to them in other areas as well. I'm in London. CIS, was it? Sorry, Emily, or... Emily, you are not on mute. okay okay so yeah these things will really be important so that you can create a visual identity that appeals to them and what influences their decisions and things like you know what social media do they like to um, spend their time on will influence things such as your uh, marketing you know what platforms are you going to spend your time on all those things are really important so it's not just the stats you know the data of the demographics you need to look deeper at your dream clients. And here we're going to talk about, so communication. So you've understood some of the core of your brand. You've understood who you want to attract. And now you've got to look at visuals. Because as I say, the, I mean, the voice and the messaging and the words will come after that because people won't read a website if it looks terrible they won't read a post if the you know the, the visual branding on an Instagram post for example is just um is, is turning them away so you've got to capture them with the visuals to get them to read what you're writing so when we talk about premium brand visuals it's a strategic design process um so this is again when I say strategic I mean we are looking at all these variables and then solving it with a piece of creativity so you're looking to create a visual presence that so it captures all of your A, so it captures your brand call, your mission, what you're about, uh, what you stand for, you know, all those things. And it also appeals to your dream clients, something that is going to draw them in, make them want to find out more. And all while consistently portraying credibility and professionalism. So remember, if we go back to the importance of credibility here. You have to look legit and professional. And unfortunately, you know, in premium branding, this is why if you get a cheap or say uh, thrown together Canva logo, it can really impact the success of converting your ideal clients. So think of premium uh, brand visuals, premium brand design as a sort of tapestry of psychological cues. So everything that is chosen in your uh, brand design will be, if you work with a brand designer or, or whatever you're doing, has to really be specifically chosen for a reason to communicate something with your dream clients. And it stimulates feelings and associations and we want to create positive ones, positive emotions, uh, positive recognition and reward. This study was really um, was really mind blowing. So we process visuals sixty thousand times faster than text. So this 
again, is proving people will have made a snap judgment about your brand and about your ability to do your job before they've read anything you've got to say, before they've seen where you've been published or where you've been featured or what awards you might have got. People will make a judgment and turning those judgments around is really difficult once they've been made. So to summarize that, but yeah, luxury brand, uh, brand design is about getting your customers to feel something when they look at your business branding and sets the expectations of what's to come. We are talking a lot about emotions and what they feel. If you see an image, it will make you feel something. It will conjure something up, some connotations or associations. And this is why it's really important, every detail of the brand design. So they must be recognisable, and this is another point we'll talk about. This is why it needs to be across all your um, touch points. You need to be recognisable and have something that is clearly seen as you, as your brand. And as I said, it needs to reflect your ideal client and their uh, likes, dislikes, and everything to do with them. It needs to be cohesive, so everything's mm -hmm. slotting together perfectly. And it needs to stay consistent. And the reason I've put stay rather than just be consistent is because it can be very easy once, say, if you rebrand and you apply everything and then things slowly start to slip, um, which is wasting doing the brand design in the first place. So you need to stay consistent. And why having things such as the mission statement, the, the vision, the values will all help um, to remind you of what you are, you know, what your brand stands for. And if you have brand guidelines, it's really important to keep to them. And lastly, I would say uh, here in this point is include high quality imagery. So grainy photos are just not, you know, grainy selfies will not communicate high end. Um, you know, brand shoots are important, but it's not necessarily just that. There are high quality imagery sort of stock images you can use. But the point is, if you are using stuff that looks really quite amateur, that's the impression that you will give across. And as I say, so to, it needs to look professional and high end to increase that credibility. So I'm going to show you some transformations and talk through the importance. So. This was my client before, so Kerry Curl Coaching, a business coach, and this was all she had to sum up what she did. Um, as you can see, it's very hard if she was selling premium coaching services to really seem like she had the experience that she actually has, which is huge. She's very experienced, very professional. Her expertise has transformed a lot of her clients' businesses. But this was all people were seeing. So she came to me and this is what we did. Uh, let's summarize this first. So yeah, she knew she who she wanted to target, um, but she wasn't attracting them. And her brand visual didn't reflect, so I say the high level of experience and expertise she had. And therefore people weren't willing to pay her premium prices because they didn't trust her enough. They didn't really believe the claims she was making. And she couldn't find any consistency. She was constantly changing things in Canva to try and get it right, which was wasting her time. So this is what we created for her. Um, and this is obviously um, quite a neutral monochrome, um, black, white with a few neutrals. We created a real identity that felt a little bit editorial, which appealed to her clients. And it has really transformed her business. She has all the assets to use. She's kept it co uh, consistent and cohesive. And the impact on her business. So she raised her prices immediately by 110%. And she booked dream clients at those prices with no pushback and made her investment that she'd uh, made with me within weeks. So she's now making consistent 10K months. People see that design they sit there like, okay this person is legit they are obviously they know their staff they've invested in a professional image people just trust her and they were far willing you know they were willing to pay those prices because they aspired to work with her 
look at one more here. So this was um, a copywriter and marketer for luxury brands, but she wasn't uh, attracting those clients or the one she was attracting. We said, oh, she wasn't, uh, they weren't willing to pay the price. They were expecting her prices to be lower. She was using Canva, a Canva logo, which didn't match her luxury aesthetic or level of expertise. And she didn't know what needed to change. But people would come to her when they heard her prices that uh, adequately reflect her uh, experience. They were surprised. They were too high. They were not what they were expecting. So we completely rebranded her business. And again, I've realized these are two quite neutral projects. So I have included in a little bit just some uh, color. But these, this impacts, and I've... Uh, Summarize that this is a quote from her, as customers now seem to expect my high ticket pricing because of how valuable they perceive my brand to be. And I thought that was the best summary I could put is people will now go to her and they expect it. They're not saying no, they're not. So yeah, they're not just saying, well, that's too expensive. They expect when they inquire with her that her prices are gonna be high because they can see how credible she is, how professional, and it's reflected to them. So she's had increased income. She's hugely more confident as well in positioning herself and less of that's too expensive responses. Now, I just want to show, as I say, it doesn't always have to be neutral. I know the two uh, things that I've shown you are neutral, but I want to show you just a bit of color. These are brands I've worked with to show it's not just, well, if I'm going to be a luxury premium service provider, I have to avoid color. No, that's not the case. You can absolutely bring in colour and still be that professional, high-end and quality brand. So just to summarise this, when you have worked out the core of your brand and you really understand it, it's then vital that to get those bookings and sales is that you communicate it visually. If you work then with, say, a copywriter or whoever, you know, that's important for conversion, definitely. I would never say that's not, not important. But if you don't capture them with the visuals first, people won't read it. They will click off your website or they will go to another post. They will click off your Instagram because it looks too chaotic. So visuals are absolutely vital if you are looking to position yourself as a luxury premium brand. Now I have included, um, so there is a link that is also in, I think the email that you've got or will get. So you can grab my free guide, which is seven secrets to luxury brand success. And it goes into all the other elements that you also need to do because branding is key, but there are, you know, there are other parts to it. And that is all included in my free guide. I've put the link on here, but obviously you can't click it. So that will be included in the follow-up email. I also have uh, a uh, an option to have a 15 minute call with me just to chat things through about branding. And also if it's something that you would like to do, um, if you're considering actually working with a brand designer and you would potentially like to work with me, there is also, if you were to book within the next 30 days for throughout September, you would save 10%. Gotta throw that in. So that is what I've got to share with you all about premium branding. Amazing, thank you so much. I would absolutely love to open the floor up to some questions if anybody has any questions. I'm just gonna hit stop on the recording.